Good morning. Nice of you to join me in this my walk in the woods. Yesterday was a walk down the clinic as Sabina had to have her blood drawn for her cancer treatments. At the same time, I reported um, just this week my friend Jeff was in the hospital and um, thanks be to God he survived his surgery and will be going, coming home on Monday and my other friend Tom who had a gallbladder attack is back, back home uh, now. Um, and even yesterday, Sabina and I went up to the church that we served at Portage for, for nine years and a columbarium that we developed there for people's ashes and we put her mom's ashes alongside those of her, her husband, Sabina's dad, who died about 17 years earlier, I think it was. So life in our own way goes on and um, you know we make decisions as we go through these times. You know it's one thing to be you know I know if I was back being a police officer I would feel that I would have to go to work the same thing as EMS workers, nurses, doctors, people who maintain the hospital. I mean they're vital people to fight this pandemic. And many, many of the rest of us had the opportunity to be be home and we didn't have to make the choice. You know, it's that choice today that's going to be the rough one between your health, your family's health, and work. Between between family and income. And that's a that's a mighty tough decision to make. And so people are see things relaxed and, you know, I'm not an epidemiologist. Um, I, I try to read and be informed about what's going out there. And I see the way the this disease is transversing our country and I don't know, it seems to me there'd be a better way to do this. But after this is all over and I'm not gonna quibble about now, but we really need to think about how we respond to this, and not just us, but as a world, as a world community about pandemics such as this, that might become more frequent, we don't know. But if you go forward, I think the important thing is being able to you know, test and isolate. And if we open things up too early without having that capacity to test a whole, whole bunch of people, and have a public health team that can go out and isolate them and find the people they've contacted. Unless we can do that in a very efficient way, this thing is going to spread and spread and spread, and it's going to pop up again and again and again. And we all have to make decisions about what we're going to do. In my case, it was fairly simple, um, at least for for me to decide. You know, I'm my wife's care, caregiver, and she has an extremely compromised immune system. And if, if I was to get the virus, living with her, it would be a death sentence for her. So when things, uh, you know, loosen up and open up around here, I, I just not, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know, I've got to be vigilant. I've got to be wary. And luckily, I'm in a position where, where I can do that. So my heart goes out to you today who, who are perhaps sitting at home and seeing things opening up and you're saying, can I risk my family's health in order to provide an income? And how can I best do that that allows me to have some income and protects them? Is there a way, is there a, a middle way for this? I don't know, I don't know. It's gonna be a tough decision. And I just want, want you to know that you know, many people are thinking about you, keeping the you in, in, in our prayers as we go forward. And you know, I know we will get through this. There, there is an end to the, to this, and uh, we will get a vaccine, and we will get this thing beat. But we also have to, at the same time, to think about you know, what are the lessons we've learned here, and let's not let this happen again. Have a great week. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. Blessings.